Hey everyone. All right. I am doing this live stream just for you tonight, my subscriber. Um, the reason why I'm doing this live stream is because I know that um, a lot of nurse aid students or candidates um, become nervous, um, you know, when they know that that test day is coming soon. Um, and one of the things that really makes the candidate nervous is not knowing what to expect on test day, not knowing what uh, the testing process is. So if you are joining in, um, if you could, please uh, type in the state that you're joining from, okay? So what happens on test day? Testing starts promptly at 8 a.m. in the morning. And when, when I say promptly, I mean, it is going to start with or without you, okay? Um, so if you are late uh, getting to the test site, um, you may not be able to take the written portion of the CEP or the competency evaluation program. However, you can hang around and still take the skills portion. So it's really, really, critical that on your test day, you arrive at that taste, excuse me, at that test site at least 30 minutes prior to um, your testing time. Okay. So test time starts at eight. You want to get to that test site at 730 in the morning. Now, what I tell my students is, hi, hello, Re Rezwan. Hopefully I pronounced your name right. If I didn't, please let me know. Um, Rezwan, if you could just go ahead and type in the state that you're joining us from. And I'm going to continue on with this live stream. If you have any questions, please go ahead and type it into the comment box, okay? So today I'm talking about what to expect um, on test day. Um, and I know this is, can be a little nerve wracking not knowing what to expect. Um, you wanna make sure again that you arrive to the test site um, at least 30 minutes prior to the start of testing. Um, and that is at eight o'clock in the morning. Again, um, it is gonna go on with or without you. So you wanna make sure that you're there on time. OK, so at eight o'clock, what happens is the NAE or nurse aid evaluator will have in everyone um, come. Hi, Michaela from California. Thank you for joining. Thank you for joining. Um, the NAE will have um, everyone go into what you would call the written test room. OK. Um, and it's at that time you want to make sure that you have both identifications. Hey, okay, all right, Rezwan is joining us from Dallas. Um, you want to make sure that you have both identifications. That's a United States government issued social security card and a valid photo ID. Now, that valid photo ID has to be signature varying. OK, um, and you want to make sure that however your name is written on your Social Security card, it's typed the same as your um, as what is on your ID. So both names have to match. If they don't match, you're not testing. OK, period. No ifs, ands or bouts or but so sorry, you are not going to test that day. Um, if your Social Security card is laminated. Um, it is a good idea that you go in uh, to your local social security office and request a new uh, social security card because um, at the test site, they will not accept laminated social security cards. If you have a school ID or a work ID, um, if you're using those as your valid photo IDs, just make sure that they are signature bearing. If, you, if they are not signature bearing, they will not accept that for testing, okay? So you just wanna make sure that you have all your P's and Q's together. Um, so when they call you in into the testing room, they're going to check your IDs, okay? They are literally going to look and check and make sure the names match and uh, they are going to make sure that your photo ID is valid, meaning it there's a signature on it and um, it, it, it has not expired, 
Okay. So when you get in there, um, you're not allowed to bring anything into the testing room except for a pencil. And that is it. Okay. Um, the NAE is going to give you instructions. So you need to make sure that you are actively listening because a lot of NAEs will not, I repeat, will not repeat their instructions. So you want to make sure that you are um, you, you are actively listening. Um, you will be given two hours to complete the written portion of the CEP. Now, depending on what state you're in, uh, depends on the number of questions on your test. Um, you're going to have anywhere from 60 to 75 questions on your test. In the state of Texas, um, you're usually going to have 70 questions um, 10 of those questions are just filler questions or comprehension, reading comprehension questions. So they're not, um, they're not counted um, as far as like scoring. So only the 60 out of the 70 will actually be um, scored. And you'll be able to tell um, which, which questions are the filler questions because, um, for example, it may be, um, you know, you're feeding um, a client suit, what you, which utensil would you use to feed the client? Um, and your answer choices may be um, a fork, a knife, um, a ladle, or a spoon, okay? So that's how you'll be able to determine whether or not it's a filler question. Um, so you'll be given two hours to complete the test. I highly recommend highly recommend that once you complete the test, you review it before you turn it in. And when I say review, I mean not, um, you know, read each question um, and, you know, start second guessing your, uh, yourself because usually the first answer choice you choose is going to be the correct answer. And a lot of candidates make that mistake when they start guessing their, their themselves and they change um, they change the right answer to a wrong answer okay so the only thing that you need to do when you review um, is one of two things um, make sure that you have answered all of the questions you filled in all of the bubble sheets and two if there is a question that you were unsure about OK, um, and you're 100 percent sure that you now know what the correct answer is, then you go ahead and change it. But if you're still second guessing and you're not quite sure, just leave the answer as is. OK, so after testing, after everyone finishes testing, you're going to have about a mm, 15, 20, 30 minute downtime until you start um, the skills examination. And that downtime, what that NAE is doing is she's sending everything, um, all the test results to uh, Pearson View. Um, so once Pearson View uh, receives uh, the test results and they review the test results, they're going to send the NAE or fax the NAE back the preliminary results, okay? And you're not going to know whether or not if you pass the written portion until the very end of the exam, okay? So that's why you have that downtime and you want to take advantage of that downtime. So when you go to your uh, testing, your testing site, you want to make sure that you bring your uh, nurse aid candidate handbook with you because during that time you can just you know quickly scan through um, or scan through the um, the manual skills um, listing okay and just you know go through a couple of them uh, through your head okay because I, I'm gonna be honest with you and don't think I'm being mean but um, on test day, if you do not know your skills, you're not going to learn them in just that 15, 20 minute downtime. OK, so that time downtime is used just for you to do a quick review um, of the skills. OK, so now that testing is done, everyone has completed um, the NAE has faxed all of the tests um, to. Hey, Kaylin from Dallas, thank you for joining. 
Um, once they've, uh, you know, received and she's received the results back from Pearson View, um, she's going to go into the waiting room, uh, wherever, you know, your testing site waiting room is, she'll go in there. Um, and then she is going to call you out by tubes. Okay. And a lot of people always uh, thought that, you know, they're calling people back for the skills exam and uh, alphabetical order, but that is not the case. Um, how they pair you up is dependent on your skill set. Okay. And the NAE receives the skill set um, in a brown envelope. It is like top secret. Okay. Top secret. Um, at least a week or two before your scheduled test date. Okay. And the computer actually, um, you know, generates all the skills or the five skills that you'll be tested on, okay? They're, and, and they're all random. Um, so anyways, you're paired up dependent on your skill set. Um, they try not to pair up um, people who have similar um, similar skills, okay? Because they don't want you to be copying off the other person, okay? The person's, who, the person's name who is first called is usually going to be the person who's testing. The second person called is going to be acting as the client, okay? So first person called, you you know, nine times out of 10, you're gonna be the one testing first. And then the second person called is going to be acting as the client. Um, once that first person uh, finishes testing, y'all are gonna flip flop roles. And now the first person will be the client, client will now be testing. Um, when it comes to your manual skills, um, and I'm going to do a different live stream on this, um, but just to give you a heads up, um, what the NAE expects, expects of the candidates is that candidate is competent um, in what they're doing and they're confident. They don't expect you to be perfect, okay, right? Because we are human. Um, we make mistakes. We make errors. Um, so we're not going to be perfect perfect, but they do want you to be competent. Um, whether the NAE is personable, whether they're nice, um, whether they're not personable, whether they're asinine, right? Because there are some NAEs out there that are asinine um, and not personable at all. It doesn't matter. They all want you to pass, okay? They really do. But you have to be competent. You have to show that you're competent um, with those manual skills. OK. Another thing is you need to know what supplies are needed for what skills um, that can help save you time. You only get 30 minutes. OK, you only get 30 minutes to um, complete all five skills. So if you're wasting a lot of time trying to figure out what skills or what supplies are needed for what skills that's running down your time and you're taking away uh, from time that you could be spending on the actual performance of a skill, okay? So knowing what supplies are needed are, is really, really important. Um, and again, knowing how to perform the skills, knowing what each um, step in a skill is actually requiring you to do. Um, that's also very important. Um, oh, I see someone walking to my doorstep and I think they're going to ring the bell, but I'm not leaving. My husband is here. He can answer that door, hopefully. Okay. Um, but, oh, my daughter just walked in. I'm sorry, guys. She just walked in. My daughter's name is Gabby. She's nine years old. She's um, Down syndrome and she's nonverbal. But she is the love of my life, the love of my life. But anyways, getting back, getting back to um, the skills testing um, is very important that, again, uh, you are competent in what you are doing. Communication is a big part. You want to remember the five indirect care skills that um, they are communication, um, uh, infection control, um, safety, dignity, and privacy, um, because you're not only getting scored on the actual manual skills, you're also going to be uh, getting scored on those five indirect care skills. The NAE, as with the written uh, portion of the test, when you get into the skills exam room, he or she is going to give you specific instructions 
for each um, individual skill, okay? Um, some NAEs will want you to address the resident and introduce yourself before each individual skills. Others will, you know, tell you, hey, I only need to observe you addressing uh, the resident and introducing yourself um, only once, and that's before the first bedside skill. Now, keep in mind, your first skill is always, always, always going to be hand hygiene. Your second skill is going to be one of the five measurement skills. Your five measurement skills are blood pressure, pulse, respirations, um, weight, and also um, urinary output, okay? With the exception of urinary output, that usually comes uh, towards the end of your skills exam, okay, most of the time. Um, and then your uh, other three skills will be random bedside skills. I always um, train my students <clears throat> to um, address the resident and to introduce them, themselves by name and title um, before they perform the hand hygiene. So at the very beginning of the skills exam, when that examinator says, okay, your time starts now, you go directly to that live person, address that person and introduce yourself at that time. Um, you will not know what five skills you have um, until um, you are back there in that exam room um, with the nurse aid evaluator. Okay, does anyone have any questions so far before I begin? Okay, so if you have any questions, you know, please feel free to type them in into the comment box, okay? Um, so you get 30 minutes to perform all five skills. Um, you can make self-corrections. There's no limit as to how many self-corrections you can make. Um, I strongly advise you to do so. You just want to make sure that if you recognize that you performed a step incorrectly or you omitted a step, that you make that self-correction right away. Um, and you have to make it before you say skill complete um, and uh, before you run out of time, okay? So um, once you say skill complete, that's it. You cannot make any self-corrections for that skill. You move on to the next skill. Uh, the only time the nurse aid evaluator will make a safety stop, and a safety stop is usually done when um, you're performing a task um, that, you know, or you're performing a step incorrectly and it may harm the person. Well, there's only, they're only allowed to do a safety stop on the skill of manual blood pressure. Um, if you inflate that blood, blood pressure cuff greater than 200, they're going to um, uh, do a safety stop. Um, they're going to tell you to stop performing that skill. Um, you will automatically fail that skill and you will have to move on and uh, to the remaining skills, okay? Um, I don't know what else to tell you all. That's really about it. It is an all day process, okay? Testing day is an, it's an all day affair. Um, depending on how many people are there. If there's a total of 10 people testing, uh, plan to be there from you know eight o'clock in the morning till three or four o'clock in the afternoon. Um, so Res Juan just asked if you have to address the client each time we start each skill. Um, again, um, when you go back into the skill room or the skill exam room, that NAE will give you specific instructions. Um, some NAEs will only want you to do that uh, once before the bedside skill, uh, your first bedside skill. Other NAEs will instruct you to do it before each individual skill. Um, so if they don't tell you, um, ask, you know, ask, you know, how do you, would you like for me to address the address the resident and introduce myself before each skill, or would you like for me to do that only once before the first bedside skill? Um, during in the, and I'm glad you asked that question because during testing, um, that NAE is not going to answer any questions. Okay, once he or she says your time starts now, that's it. 
they will not answer any questions. Um, they'll either look at you and say nothing, or they'll look down at their clipboard, or they'll tell you you need to perform uh, the steps in the scale. Okay. So before, when that NAE asks if you have any questions and if it's something that they have not mentioned, ask. Okay, ask because once once they start that timer, they will not answer any questions. I hope that answered your question, Rezwan. Does anyone else have any other questions? Any specific questions? When do you all test? When when is your test day? You are most welcome. You are most welcome. Is anyone testing within the next week or two? March 28th, March 22nd. All right. Are y'all prepared? Are y'all prepared for the exam? All right, that is awesome. Um, and like I said, when it comes to the skills, um, you know, the main thing is to try to, you know, shave time whenever you can. Um, that's in gathering your supplies. Uh, so it's really important to know what supplies are needed for what skills. Um, and then also um, when you're, um, you know, walking, you know, back and forth, uh, that's when you can shave time. You don't want to walk in a nonchalant manner, um, yet you don't want to run. But if you do like a fast paced walk, that can shave a lot of time um, to where it can add more time on performing more com uh, complex skills. Um, it's not important really to speak fluently. Um, I will tell you that um, you do want to, what, when you're performing your skills, you want to vocalize every single thing that you are doing. Um, if you are, you know, uh, pulling the covers um, down from the person, you know, let them know that. If you are getting ready to turn them, let them know, hey, I'm getting ready to turn you. Um, I have my students to vocalize every single thing that they are doing while performing a skill for a couple of reasons. One is going to alert you because you're saying it out loud, is going to alert you uh, whether or not you're performing a skill um, in the correct order or if you're uh, getting ready to perform something incorrectly. And two, it is going to take your mind off of that NAE, that stranger that is just standing there, not saying a word and watching you, not showing any emotions. So it's going to block, it's going to block that person and to where you can be more concentrated on what you are doing. Awesome. That's good. You've been doing practice questions. That's awesome. That's good. Um, a really good site to go to is CNA Plus. Um, I don't know if that's the site you, you're using, but CNA Plus um, actually updates uh, their questions on a regular basis. Uh, they just had the update, the 2018 update um, in March of this year, and they actually updated um, their questions. All right. Awesome. That is good. That is good. You should do well. Yeah. CNA plus. You should do well um, on your written exam. That is good. Mm -hmm. Do y'all have any other questions? No, I wish this was a live chat. I wish that we could. Um, like talk instead of just typing.
All right. Well, you know what? I just want to tell you all once again, thank you so much for joining my live stream. I hope this live stream uh, was um, helpful to you all. Um, as a matter of fact, me and my cohorts uh, tomorrow will be doing a video on um, a, a, a skills exam. Um, and hopefully I'll get that posted up um, tomorrow or up, excuse me, upload it tomorrow or uh, this weekend sometime. Uh, so don't forget to hit uh, subscribe to my channel, uh, you know, turn on notifications so you can um, be alerted as to when I upload a new video. Um, again, we're going to actually do an actual skills exam. Uh, so people, my subscribers, uh, can see how it's actually done. Okay. So again, thank you so much. Good luck on your test. If you know any other uh, nurse aid candidates or students, um, you know, have them to uh, subscribe to my channel. Uh, let them know I am out here and I'm actually going to ex start expanding the content on my channel. Oh, awesome. That is so good to hear, Kaylin. I'm so glad that they are, um, my videos are helpful um, to you with practicing. That That's so good to hear. Um, a lot of them I'm still in the process of updating but for the most part, like peer, the videos for peri care and uh, catheter care, um, the, those are there's really no major changes um, in those skills with the updates. Um, but here in the near future, I'll probably redo those videos also. Um, so again, good luck on your test. Y'all stay positive. Uh, be competent and be confident. Okay. You got to walk in there. Even if you're nervous, don't let it show. Okay. Um, so I'm gonna, going to, let's see. No, there are only, um, Kaylin, Kaylin asks if um, you will be performing peri care on a live person. And that is no. Okay. For dignity and privacy reasons, you will not be doing that on a live person. There are only three skills that are performed on, a, uh, on the mannequin. And that is peri care, uh, catheter care, and um, knee high stocking. Okay. Um, for California, I think someone was here from California. Um, I think it was Reswan. No, let me see. I'm sorry, Michaela. Michaela, um, California, basically, you have uh, the same skills, um, the same testable skills as Texas, except for catheter care. Um, you folks in California are not tested on catheter care. So remember, those are the three skills that are performed on the mannequin, peri care, catheter care, and knee high stocking. All other skills are performed on a live person. Okay, any more questions before I end this live stream? All right, guys, I'm going to um, uh, end this live stream here in a bit. I just want to let you know that I will be uh, doing live streams, um, not daily, um, but at least a few times a week. Um, I really wanted to do this one because I, you know, not only on my YouTube uh, channel, but um, on my Facebook page, excuse me, I've been getting a lot of inquiries um, regarding uh, the test day, the testing day process. And so I thought that it was important for me to get this, uh, you know, do this on live stream uh, so I can connect with you a little bit better um, and you can ask questions uh, during uh, this preview. Thank you so much. Thank you, Rezwan. If y'all have any more questions, uh, just visit any of my videos and uh, type in your questions um, in the comment sections below my videos, okay? Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, okay? Um, on the videos, uh, tell your friends, your cohort, cohorts, your classmates, um, about my YouTube channel so they can change, uh, you know, subscribe. And again, um, my channel will be expanding, okay, uh, to include other content. 
So I thank y'all so much. Mwah! Love y'all. Good luck on your test. Y'all are going to do good. Bye-bye.